Um, so what's happening here? You, you've still got two images of your hand. There's still two images, one on the left retina and one on the right retina. But somehow the brain has managed to pull those two images together and make them form a single composite three-dimensional image somewhere in the head. The brain has built a single model of the hand, or whatever it is, in your head. Whenever we think we see out there, whenever we see what we call reality out there, what we're actually seeing is a representation in the head, a model in the head, a simulation in the head. It's a very useful simulation because it's constantly being updated by information coming in from the sense organs. It's not just sitting there. The sense organs are pouring information in, but that information is not being seen raw. It's being used to update the model that's sitting there in the head. The reality that we see, in other words, is constructed in our skulls as virtual reality, to use the computer jargon. So now let's look at virtual reality in a computer. Here we have a very powerful, fast computer. And inside that computer, you're going to see in a moment, is a model of a world, a microcosm, a small world. It's a house with a corridor and some rooms leading off it. And I'm going to ask somebody to come down and experience what it's like to walk through that world. Karen is going to uh, come down and help us stand there, on that spot there. And first of all, I want to just explain that um, they, the headset here has two little television screens. And the images of those two screens are cunningly offset in the computer so that what she will see is just what she would see if she were seeing in 3D in stereo. Now, if you could put that on. Yes, sorry. The other way around. Ah, right. Thank you. Right. Now, is that comfortable? Mm-hmm. Now, we're beginning to see on the screen what she can see. Now, could you please, to begin with, Karen, just turn your head gently from side to side. And notice that when she does that, the world appears to move. Now, if you were in this helmet as she is, this would seem very natural to you because as you turn your head, the world appears to move in just the right way. Move your head up and down as well and see, let's see what happens. If she moves her head up and moves her head down. Remember that she's seeing it in stereo. We're only seeing what one of her two eyes is seeing. So we're seeing it in mono. Right, so you have the idea that Karen, although she's standing in front of you there, she thinks that she's standing in a corridor with a row of doors on one side and she thinks that she's going to be able, indeed she is going to be able, to walk down that corridor. And she does it, she's not going to actually move her feet very much, she's going to press buttons on the little thing you see her holding in her hand. This is a little controlling box and if she presses one button she can go forward, you go forward a bit, and if she presses another button she can go backwards. Right. Now, to have a little walk around Karen, and uh, see what you find if you go into one of those doors. Here she is walking along the corridor, and she's going to turn. I don't know which door she's going into. That's her Fair choice. Enough. She can go into any door she likes, and she'll find something behind the door. She's going through the door. Now, what's she got here? This looks like fish. She's, she's swimming around in a room full of fish. But I think I see a butterfly as well. Remember, this is not a real world. This is a virtual world. Anything you like can be put into this world. It's an imaginary world in the computer. Those fish are each programmed individually to behave as autonomous entities, as though they were real fish. Right, would you like to tell us what you're doing now, Karen? Well, if I got her into space... Right, she's backed out through a wall, I think. And That's then <laughs> turn around 180 degrees. I can look, look onto it all. Right. Right, go back into the room then. Into the room. Let's get out. Right, now that arrow that you see hanging in front of her in, in the virtual space is her hand. That represents her hand. Now she waves her hand around, you can see the arrow moving. And soon she's going to approach the door and touch it with the hand, with the arrow, 
it opens the door. And through we go into the corridor. Now where are you going to go, Karen? Um. Turning round, okay. Turning right round. Oh, yeah. Right. Every, everywhere she looks, she sees something. She can go wherever she likes. Back along the corridor. Maybe into another room? Yes, go and see what's in that door there. Right, now what have we here? This seems to be a chess set. Can you walk around among the chessmen? There's a pawn. Can you pick that up? Mm-hmm. Let's try again. Touch it with the hand. There it goes. She's lifting up the, the pawn with her hand. Do you see her hand moving and then also the chess man is moving? She's let go of it. Yeah. No, she hasn't. No. If I can let go. There. And it drops. Okay. Now what's that curious sort of plank there? Let me go and see what's over there. She's, oh, she's going to fall over an edge. There's another chessboard down there. She's falling. Right, she's on the lower chessboard. There's another pawn. Go wherever you like, Karen. Do you want to fly about a bit? Do you want to carry the pawn about? She's dropped it. Where's it going? <laughs> <laughs> it's disappeared. It's gone, right. Now, where are you? Help, we're now underneath the chessboard. <laughs> Get, we're right underneath the lower... Now we're up the, going up the cliff. There's a castle. Up the... Whoops. <laughs> oh. OK, well, thank you very much indeed, Karen. What was really going on there? Was there really a chess man there? Was there really a chess board? In a sort of sense, there was. There was a mathematical representation that is read out on the television screens as though it was a chess board, as though it was chess men. And it behaved in a, in a realistic way. You could pick things up, throw them around, you could go through doors, you could move around that world, and if you threw chess board men down to the lower board, then they would stay there until you went down and picked them up again. So there was something that corresponded to reality there. And what I'm trying to suggest to you is that just that same something is going on inside your own skulls at this very moment. There is a virtual reality simulation of the world going on inside your heads, and that's what you're seeing. But how do I know that? How do I know that that's what our brain is doing? Well, one way we can get a clue is by looking at illusions. Now, here's a mask of Charlie Chaplin. It's perfectly ordinary, there's nothing trickery about it, it's just an ordinary mask. And when you look at the front side, it looks solid and normal, as you'd expect. The odd thing that you'll see is when you start looking at the back side, at the hollow side, because although it is in fact hollow, if you look at it, I think you'll agree that it looks solid. And what's more, it not only looks solid, but it seems to be going around in the wrong direction, so that when the, the real front side comes round, it seems to sort of eat it up. There's the real front side. Now that really is solid. And when the other side comes round, that is going to look solid as well, even though it isn't. Well, what's going on here? When the brain sees anything that looks like two eyes, a nose and a mouth, it immediately sets up inside the head a model of a face. It's desperately eager to see a face. It will see a face if there's the slightest excuse to do so. And the backside of this mask is the slightest excuse. There is two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. And that makes the brain get out, dust off its model of a three-dimensional face. Now, if you think about what would happen to the images on the two retinas, if the image really was solid, if the thing really was solid, the actual movements on the retinas is compatible with the idea of a solid face moving in the opposite direction. And so the brain eagerly seizes upon that, and it makes the solid face rotate in the wrong direction. 